Welcome. Today I'd like to talk about a, an application of Pythagoras' theorem that is actually quite sophisticated and it can be done fairly early on. In my geometry course, which I use uh, the book Geometry Volume 1, um, I chose to do Pythagoras pretty quickly, like third or fourth chapter. Um, I know Euclid left Pythagoras' theorem to the end of, near the end of his work because he realized it was really an application that follows logically from the similar triangle principle. But when I wrote this geometry book, I thought about what's the student experience. Since Pythagoras' theorem is studied in middle school, they know about Pythagoras' theorem, and it seems silly in, in their storyline to leave it to the end of a geometry course. So I brought Pythagoras' theorem at the beginning of the book, and then we talk about once we've got similar triangles, that actually it does follow as a consequence of that. But at the beginning of my book, which you can find, by the way, so I'll just do a little plug at www.lulu.com, just search under geometry and tantan, you'll find it. Um, I do something that most books, at least in the high school level, I've not seen do. Let's talk about shortest distances. And what do I mean by that? All right, so I'm going to assume we know basic Pythagoras' theorem, and the first question I ask my students is the following. Here's a line, assume it's straight, and here's a point P not on my line. The question is, I'm standing at P, and I'm going to walk to the line. I don't care where I end up, but I'm going to go, the sh what's the shortest path from P to any point in that line? Now, when I ask this question in class, most kids will say, just go straight down. In fact, I deliberate how I draw the picture. I always draw a tilted line like I've done here and a point B above it. So when they say straight down, I follow them literally and draw a line that goes straight down. And of course, they yell at me and tell me that's not what they meant. So when we finally get our language correct, they decide what they really meant was go straight across to the line, coming in at a 90 degree angle. So the question then is, how do I know that solid line really is shorter than the dotted line I first drew? How is, why is that solid line the shortest path of all? Well, that is what I'm really asking. If that's A inches and that's B inches, how do we know that A is shorter than B? Well, Pythagoras then will do it for us. If I give the third side of this little triangle, I see the name X. Pythagoras says that B squared is A squared plus X squared. That's saying it's B squared is A squared plus some more stuff. So I can certainly conclude that B squared is bigger than A squared. That is, since I'm in the world of positive numbers, taking square roots, I can definitely for sure conclude that B is bigger than A. You're right. Uh, this solid line, A, is smaller than the dotted line, B. In fact, if I draw any line like this, if I call that length C, the same argument, if I looked at Pythagoras, which will show me that C is longer than A. Or a line over here would have to be longer than A. Or a line really close, but quite a little bit off, is going to be longer than A. So if you believe there's a shortest path to begin with, I'm being very careful of my language there, and we'll just uh, like slide over that little uh, question. Then we've just proved that the shortest path must be the perpendicular, given by the perpendicular segment from the point to the line. So my first result is one, that if the shortest path from a point to a line, and I'll just run bother the words, is given by the perpendicular segment. All right, that's a nice little application of Pythagoras' theorem. Next application. Suppose I have two points this time. Uh, where's my pen? There it is. Point A and a point B. I'm at A. I'd like to walk to B. What's the shortest way to get from A to B? Well, everyone's going to tell me just go straight across. Follow a straight line from A to B. Well, what if I ask this? I'm going to go a path that goes up somewhere and then back down. How do I know that blue line isn't shorter than the black line? Oh, now, now it's a challenge. Now, of course, everyone's laughing at me and think I'm being really silly, but I'd actually like some logical reason. How do we know that blue line is actually shorter than the black line? Well, after some, uh, some thought, students might think to do this. Let's actually draw a little perpendicular. And in fact, we just proved that in any right triangle, that the hypotenuse, let me just uh, spell it out over the side here. Sorry, forgive me for this. If this pop out news is h, is actually shorter than any side of the triangle. The reason would be that h squared is a squared plus b squared by Pythagoras. That tells me h squared is a squared plus some more stuff. It tells me h squared is bigger than a squared. And since we're in the world of positive numbers, I can conclude for sure that h is bigger than a. And the same reasoning tells me that h is bigger than b. So in any right triangle, Pythagoras says the argument basically as before the hypotenuse is definitely longer than either leg. Well, if that's A inches and that's B inches, how do I know that A plus B is longer than the black line? Well, we just proved that A is longer than this length, which I'll call X. B is longer than this length, which I'll call Y. So we've got that A is longer than X. B 
is longer than y. So adding these, my blue path a plus b is longer than x plus y for sure, which is the black path. In fact, that argument's wonderful. No matter what triangular hump I do, the same argument would apply to prove that the two legs of the purple path of the triangular hump are always longer than the two sections of the straight path legs. A uh, little challenge, I've kind of been misleading with my picture, and I'd leave this as an exercise for the kids. Can you prove that's true if my triangular path goes like this? That's a good exercise. That's a good exercise for you too. Why don't you try it? How, how would my Pythagorean argument prove that my green path here is definitely longer than the black path? But anyhow, we have another wonderful result here. We've just basically proven that in any triangle, ha ha ha, pick a side, that's a straight edge path between two points, the other two sides must represent a longer path than the straight path. We just prove a plus b is longer than c in a triangle. In fact, we just proved the triangle equality. By the same reasoning, if I focus on side a as being my straight path, b plus c is longer than a, and if I focus on the third edge as my straight path, a plus c is longer than b. So we've just proven the triangle inequality that in any triangle, any two sides add up to more than the third. a plus b is bigger than c, etc. That's really a consequence of Pythagoras' theorem. This is just wonderful. Um, but let me go further. My original question was, what's the shortest path from a to b? Now let's get into some sort of fun theoretical territory. Just because I did a path that was a single triangular hump doesn't mean that uh, all paths are going to be like that. Let me redraw my picture. Let's get my pen. A, B. We'd like to believe that this black path straight across is the shortest path. What if I did a wild polygonal path like this? Prove to me that that blue path is longer than the black path. Oh heavens. Well, it takes a bit of thought, but eventually you might think to do the following. Well, we just proved that any triangular hump is longer than a straight cuff. So I can break this into triangular humps. For example, I can look at this piece right here. This solid brown line is longer than the dotted line. So let me just erase that part and say, OK, my blue path is longer than this blue with the dotted line. In fact, by the same reasoning, I can remove any triangular hump. Is my pen gone? Sorry and say the path I had before is longer than the one with that triangular hump removed. So all right, my original blue path is longer than this one I'm here, seeing here. In fact, I can keep doing this. It's longer than um, this path. It's longer than this path. Get rid of that. It's longer than this path. Get rid of this. Longer than this path. Get rid of that. It's longer than this path. Get rid of that path. Longer than get rid of that hump. Uh, it's longer than this path. Get rid of that hump. Get rid of this 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 hump. And get rid of this hump. We've just proved that my wildly uh, polygonal blue path, if I just removed humps at the time, is longer than the straight path. All right, so any polygonal path I'm willing to believe from A to B is longer than the straight path. Well, now let's get into calculus. Who said all paths had to be made of straight line segments? Can I prove that whoops, A, straight path to B, Suppose I had a curved path from A to B. Can I argue that that too has to be longer than the straight path? This is a great theoretical exercise. It's great to do with young kids, and it's really a wonderful application of limits. The answer is, well, and kids will come up with this, I can approximate that curved path by putting straight line segments everywhere by a polygonal path. And we just proved that any polygonal path is longer than the black line from A to B. And in fact, um, this red path is not exactly the same length as the blue one. Um, it's not very, not, maybe not the best approximations, but it's definitely longer than the black line. But we can improve our approximations by doing shorter and shorter line segments. If I can do a really jolted path, we can say every single approximation to the blue path is definitely longer than the black line. And then you have to go through some mental contortions here, and you have to argue, well, in the limit, in some sense, since any approximation can be made really close to the same length as the blue path, and every approximation is longer than the black line, then it seems reasonable to believe that the blue path itself must also be longer than the black line. 
Now, this sort of thinking is great. It's brilliant. This, is, this worked fabulously for those that beginning with calculus in the 1500s, 1600s, and early 1700s. But of course, then crises occurred in the 1800s and people discovered that paths can be mighty strange and might not be rectifiable in this way and weird things can go on. However, that's a crisis for once you've studied calculus for a while first and then understand its deep underpinnings and to realize that things might be going wrong. But at the very least, in terms of this polygonal level, it seems that our belief that the shortest path between any two points is given by a straight line is yet another consequence, really, of just Pythagoras' theorem. That I'll just draw the theorem like this. It's wonderful to realize that this sort of intuitive idea can actually be justified from a wonderful result, Pythagoras. Clever, clever stuff. All right, that's all I wanted to say for today. Shortest distances can be thought in terms of Pythagoras' theorem, and it's fun to do that with kids. Thanks so much.